Hello and welcome to Deep Blue Sea, the podcast. I am Mark Sweaty Handwriting Hoffmeyer. And I am Jay Lucky Cluett, a man who needs no introduction. Former host, former shepherd of the Love Association movie blogs, former host of the Lambcast, founder of Life vs. Film.com, co host of Conair the Podcast. I, I loved how Jason Schwartzman said no introduction and gives himself, gives himself such a full introduction. Anyway, this is These TV drones are not very good, Jay. <laughs> These drones are not. <laughs> <laughs> he's the best part yeah he uh, is. so yeah this is deep blue sea the podcast on this show we've been to the entire deep blue sea trilogy scene by scene now we're looking at uh deep blue sea adjacent films or film franchises that have deep blue scenes in them and this is the culmination of our five-part series looking at the hunger games films because i don't think they're making any more but we'll see if they do we'll cover them but this is hunger games the ballad of songbirds and snakes the prequel 2023 recent film uh directed by francis lawrence who did I, like all but the first one of the Hunger Games films, uh, there's this you know the story. It stars Tom Blythe as the young Coriolanus Snow before he became president, before he became Donald Sutherland, uh, who is a mentor for the tenth Hunger Games, in which he is uh, mentoring Lucy Gray Baird, Rachel Zegler, in uh, just a standard American accent the whole way through. It's how all Americans sound to English people. I'll uh, hey now, well, I don't <laughs> know. what's going on now. I, just using your normal voice there, Mark. That's how you sound all the time. Can, uh, can I say? Uh, so I watched a show called ESPN FC, and they had a Scottish guy doing it, like, like doing an American accent for us. And then he goes, "Hey, now, what's going on now? Hey, y'all." And you're like, what? <laughs> what? That's <laughs> because that's how, Amer- how how English people do, or British people do American accents. We go southern. And it's the easier <laughs> one to do because it's funny. <laughs> Howdy, y'all! I'm Jay Clue, and welcome aboard the Lambcast. It's just, it's easier, because it, like, there's more nuances to the northern ones. Like, to do, to, like, for, if you try to do, like, New York, there's, there's 25 oh, accents in yeah, New York. Minnesota. Yeah, like, yeah. You could steal City Hall, is all I can do from New York, because I've seen Die Out of the Vengeance a million times. Uh, but yeah, I can't do, I can't do Minnesota, I can't do Fargo. Like, I, it's just not going to happen. But yeah, you go mm-hmm. Southern, you go Cowboy, you do whatever Rachel Zuckerberg was doing in this. And, and it, it's just the easier, it's under, it's recognizable as an American accent. Uh, I will say, though, that Rachel Ziegler, she's very, she's very good in this movie. Yes, she, she is. Yeah. Every, you know what? You know, what's crazy about this film is, is it's a prequel about how <laughs> Donald Sutherland became evil, which is insane. But everyone's yep. acting their faces off like Viola Davis. She, oh, she's incredible. Like. No one told her she was in a prequel. Like I Peter had no Dinklage, idea she was in this film. Like I, Peter I, Dinklage is Peter Dinklage. He drinks things and he knows things, and sure. and you know he hates when his drugs are poisoned with poison, which yeah. is kind of bad. But he drinks his morphine right in front of everybody. By the way, he just kind of turns around and gulps it. Like Schwartzman's great. I think I think Tom Blythe is good. Rachel Ziegler's good. Like they they pop off the screen. I think this movie really like earns its right to exist <laughs> in as a prequel because. It's pretty brutal. It has a really uh, like you think the tournament's on. It has a, it's a lot longer than you think it should be. But it, everyone's do acting their faces off. It looks good. It's performed well, and it and it had legs. I mean, it made three hundred twenty seven million at the box office on a hundred million dollar budget, so it was profitable, and it became kind of a sleeper hit for Lionsgate. So I think it also features drones with water bottles, which yes, we'll, we'll talk does. about. But it, <laughs> it's a movie that. It's, you watch a prequel and you're like, eh, this could be just like a stupid. This doesn't need to exist. But then you watch everyone acting their faces off, and you go, oh, okay, like this, this movie does exist and it's good and they made it well and it made money. Yeah, I feel like it could have been. I'm glad it wasn't two films. But I feel like it could have been two films. Cause <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Just because there's a there's a whole hour of film after the Hunger Game in this film, like. But, but I, I feel like if they had split it, it they would have probably split it at that point. And then that second half is oh. not a fun time. <laughs> I'm not watching those movies anymore. When they split a movie into two parts, I'm not doing it anymore. Sure. I just, I'm yeah. not. I mean, I'll have to do my it. jobs, but I mean, and, and there's a bunch of second halves that we like. We need to close off Spider Verse and Fast X and. I mean, Dead Reckoning is kind of just another film at this point. But we need to close off these loops that are open. <sighs> Uh, make a movie to be alive. Yeah. make a movie <laughs> it can end right make, yeah. it's, it's two and a half hours it can end uh, yeah. <laughs> I love I loved Across the Spider-Verse but 
<laughs> I'm just on a, on a cliff edge for years now. So anyway. I'm happy Into the Spider Verse won the Oscar for animated feature, and I'm happy that Boy and Heron won that won this year because it's a movie. It's a full movie, yeah. in and out. Like it tells a full story. So I think if they can nail the landing of a scr- across the Spider Verse two, then that should get the Academy Award. If that makes sense. Yeah. Is it beyond the Spider Verse? The next one? I can't remember. Oh. So. Interesting. Yeah, who knows? They have time to change it. Anyway. The ballad of Buster Scruggs here. I mean, that's. Yes. I mean, uh, sorry, the <laughs> songbirds and snakes. I kind of. I mean, they're both the kind of musicals. Here. So yeah. Good water scenes in both. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that's a great. I. I Tim oh, so Tim good, isn't it? In Buster Scruggs is fantastic. Oh yeah, he's incredible. It makes me yeah. so happy. Yeah. But this, like, all right, this movie. The first shot is snow, which makes me very happy. Sure. Snow. Yeah. Snow lands on top like that. Uh, John Snow should have never said that. Like, John Snow should have been like, "Snow always lands on top." You know, you know what I mean? Like, th- yeah. is this the first movie where they said a line like that? Well, I, I mean, they do a bunch of them because you have Dinklage later. Like, do you know what, the, what that sound is? That's the sound of snow falling. And he, he just <laughs> he, he, he makes such a meal out of that. And like, you've been sitting on that for weeks. You've been <laughs> you've well actually for years because he has the history with with uh, Corio's dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, one day I, I've already I've said this to you a bunch of times. I'm gonna wait and say this to your son. I know. I'm gonna, yeah, this is a good one. I'll oh, sit on snow's fall. And he drinks limitless juice in this movie, Peter Dinklage. <laughs> he does. <laughs> yeah, he's he's. I, I mean, he he drink, he takes the drugs in front of everyone because what are they gonna do? He he hates his existence. He hates what he's doing. He hates where he is. I don't blame him. <laughs> he's dropping morphine in front of the students. Yeah. Like, so he goes, I hate all of you. And then he turns around and gloop, and then he turns back around. He has the capital version of tenure. He's fine. They can't do it. <laughs> 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 he's that tenure professor that's just given up. But he has tenure. And he created the Hunger Games when he was drunk. Yes, he drunkenly napkin scrolled the Hunger Games. Imagine that, Jay. You and I are plastered one night. <laughs> Sure. And we were we're schoolmates in a in a post apocalyptic world, dystopian future, and we just come up with the Hunger Games, just like yeah, like I mean, <laughs> we think everyone's gonna laugh at it and be like this is stupid, you know, like ha ha ha, but then someone goes we're gonna do this, and then you and I become the creators. That'd be you just you never do anything when you're drunk, Jay. That's yeah. my thing. Don't text, don't buy, I mean, don't I, write. I, I just don't get drunk. I just like it's my kind of like I'll have a drink, but I, I just not anymore. I just, yeah, no, because <laughs> that's times. what happens. Yeah, you kill murder children in in death matches. I mean, not anymore. Uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need the story of Jay. You're gonna learn a lot about him. Oh God, the Jay prequel. Uh, yeah, we need a prequel to Jay. Well, that Jay Jay <laughs> Jay Bird. Very, a very boring story. The Ballad of Jaybirds and something. Dogs. Involve far more origami than anybody, anybody would want to see, I think. <laughs> uh, the, the, the origin of Mark is, is genuinely, it's got uh, bar brawls and trips to, uh, to Korea and all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Yeah. Just call it what not to do. <laughs> no, the, the Mark Hoffman story. <laughs> <laughs> I've made many mistakes. The Mark Hoffmeyer story. <laughs> oh, man. It would be like a... You know how Richard Linkletter made a very sensitive story about boyhood? Mine would just be like, oof That would be the title of my movie if it was filmed over 14 years. But I think it would be more uh, entertaining than... than <laughs> boyhood, fine film. I, I mean, I've never seen it. I'm not going to see it again. Uh, but I was, like, I was waiting for something to happen. In oh, that aliens? <laughs> Any children death matches? Just anything. I don't enjoy just watching a child grow up. That's not a film I want to see. Uh, Random question. At the end of this film, hmm. what's Viola Davis playing with with those underwater monsters? Are are those like ill-tempered sea bass? I thought they were eels. Some kind of like she just has a a vat of eels in her office. In the same way that you want to have a, a tiger shark pool in your living room. Interesting. You could just walk right into that thing. If you're, if you're like looking I'm at sure. a clipboard in her office, you could fall into that. I mean, she's unhinged. She, that's what she wants to happen. Like, just no one wears those gloves with, with sanity. Like, just, 
she's she's a crazy person. Uh, I loved her look. I loved all of her looks. It's a lot of hair. Uh, a lot of hair. going on. <laughs> I mean, yeah, with, with, we've seen stuff in the capital. We've seen the fashion of the capital before. I'm always glad to revisit just the the nonsense that they wear and how they style themselves. That's always fun. And yeah, that's pretty much entirely on Viola Davis in this film. They just throw it all at her in every scene. It's impossible to really dislike this movie when you watch her performance because she's bringing it <laughs> in this yeah. movie. I got Dinklage is kind of sleeping through it because he's just Dinklage Yeah, I guess he's good yeah. in it, but it's nothing yeah. he hasn't done before. I said his his character is just that that's he's you know as he said he's drunk and he knows things he's just kind of bitter. A Wait, bit he's drugged and, and he knows things. There we go. Yes, he's drugged and he knows things. I mean, I guess that's water. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the main water stuff is is the the drones of the water bottles. Yeah. I think. And the gross puddle water. Yeah, and there's the lake at the end. But like, I, I think this is the first time we're talking about weaponized water. Uh, with with like, you know, like weaponized yeah, poison water. water. Yeah, poison yeah, water. Yeah, there's poison as well. Yeah. Uh, just I I. <laughs> I just love the, the the notion of okay, these drones are terrible. This is how they send in aid is with this water bottle, and Corio needs to help out uh, uh, Lucy Gray, so just sends like eight drones of water. I, that's I, I didn't see it coming. I thought it was great, an excellent tactic. Well done to him. Great moment. And those that lady left was brutal. Hmm. She yeah. was she was scary. Yeah, I mean the the whole the actual like. The Hunger Game, the tenth Hunger Game, because it's such a small arena. There's like not, there's I don't think you're supposed to go into the sewers under the ground. That feels like a, a loophole they were they were they were kind of expecting, but I feel like they want everyone to just stay out in the, in the big arena and fight. But you, you can I I appreciate how you can see like it starts here and it grows out to being where it is in 65 years time. So I I I, cause I had no idea I haven't read the book I had no idea going in what we were going to see other than young Coria. Uh, so just just seeing the devolution of the game, I guess, and where it all comes from, uh, was interesting. And I, I still want to see every single Hunger Games, uh, which isn't how you're supposed to come out of these films. You're supposed to come out of these films thinking like, hey, those Hunger Games are bad. They're bad news. People, this is what we want to do. But I'm like, I kind of want to see every Hunger Game. <laughs> yeah, give me just give me a pay per view. Like, you know how there's UFC one, two, three, four. Like just film them and put them out. Yeah, just give me like a, a 15 minute highlight reel of each game. Whoa! Like, and I can, I'll just like binge one a day and one lunch break. I'll just watch watch another Nugget Hunger game. Oh, that's like you know, there's a thing called Goal Zone that showcases all the goals scored over the weekend during soccer matches, and it's like 15 minutes, but just shows all the goals. That's what I want for the Hunger Games. Sure. Yeah. Be great. <laughs> Is that too much to ask? I love these water <laughs> drones, though. That's like these drones aren't very good. Like that's one of the greatest lines. <laughs> Of it, but I, I don't know. I, I, I think they incorporate that well. There's that gross puddle water. He has sweaty hands. Let's talk about the. So there's a, a very gratuitous shower scene. Tom Blythe is very skinny in this movie. Yes, yes. it starts out with him. Do you, do you buy him as Young Sutherland? No. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I, I thought he was fine as, as a he, He's fine, but I don't but think. Like, he doesn't sorry, have. Yeah. He doesn't have kind of that mania that old older Donald has but then I don't, I've, I've, we've never seen uh, uh, Donald Sutherland who is supposed to be like 20 I don't know how old he's 18, 20 but like going back to, to some of Sutherland's younger performances when he's in like Kelly's Heroes he still has that mania. manicness to him <laughs> um, which yeah I, I would say Tom Bright is missing but then he's not playing young Donald Sutherland he's playing <laughs> young President Snow so yeah. I'm gonna say he does that okay I mean, he's good though. I like yeah. him, but I don't. I I don't. I, I never once was like, oh hey, that's a little Sutherland, if that sure. makes sense. Like, I, but I think it's smart that he's not trying to Sutherland it up. Like I think he's just doing his own thing. Yeah, but yeah he's he's fine. And I, but like I think that between him and Ziegler, when they bond, Rachel Ziegler or yeah, you know, just well, wow, man, what's her name? Oh, Lucy Gray Baird, Lucy Gray. Would they, I like them when she's when she when they bond together and she's kind of playing him. He's playing her. 
But there are good moments when he's like, are you sure you love me? Because I'm putting myself at risk here. Like, you can see that he's still a shady guy. Like He's not a good dude. He probably wouldn't have helped her if she wasn't into him. So it's it's kind of fun watching in that regards. And his turn is quite subtle. But it's not as abrupt as, say, what? What uh, Daenerys in Game of Thrones. Everyone's like, there's breadcrumbs leading up to that. Didn't you see it? It's like, nah, come on, y'all. But I think yeah. this one you buy into it. And plus, he still has decades to become that evil. Yes, absolutely. I mean, he, he's... <laughs> Spoilers, I guess. I mean, he, he's helped kill his only friend. Yep. Uh, he's now, like, uh, usurped that guy's fortune. He's become the, the heir to that, his, his dad's fortune. And that's kind of not the way... A good person sets out in life. So he's just kind of starting out with a, a really rocky foundation. He's just going to go from there. And he's, he's kind of learned that wheeling and dealing and turning back your back on people and poisoning people gets you money, gets you results. So why would he do anything else? Yeah. But his his dad uh, is played by an actor called Michael Greco. Sorry, no, not his, not his dad. The dad of uh, uh, Plinth, Strabo Plinth. Uh, um, he's played by a guy called Michael Greco who... Uh, played Beppe De, Beppe De Marco in EastEnders for years. <laughs> <laughs> Back the, the short period of time where I used to watch EastEnders with my parents was when Michael Greco was on it. So I was like, I was watching, thinking, I recognize. Where do I seen that guy? Like, oh, <laughs> twenty four years ago he played a guy in a soap opera for four years. <laughs> and it just that just jumped out at me like, wait a minute, it's Beppe De Marco. <laughs> uh, so that, that was funny. He's got a really small role in this. As the rich dad. As the rich dad. Like I see him. That's Pepe DeMarco? Pepe. Pepe, Pepe. DeMarco. Pepe. It's, a, it's a real fun name. Uh, Isn't it kind of fun when you when you just associate an actor with one name? So when they come on screen, you're just kind of like, oh, hey, there's Friday Night Lights or there's The Wire. Whenever like you like whenever sure. you see Idris, you know, you talk about his character from The Wire. Like you're just I mean, sort I, of I go Luther. But yeah, sure. Yeah, Luther. Same it's, thing. Oh, <laughs> Luther. Yeah. You just see him. Yeah, it was Luther. Luther. And and yeah, Pepe DeMarco. I'm like, but you know what though? I I was happy seeing Ziggler take a chance with her accent in this movie because they they weren't trying to hide her in this film. Like I think West Side Story she's good in and she sings great, uh, but I think Ariana DeBose DeBose won like won that movie over. She did. But in this one, they weren't trying to hide her or protect her or she because she's a relatively new actor in regards to giant leading roles. And so it was kind of fun watching her, them like let her show her strengths and like like when she's bowing, she's pulling it off like she's got the charisma. So I kind of appreciate that. Like I don't think we wanted to deal with another Jennifer Lawrence because she was very sullen in the, she's great, but she's very sullen yeah. in those movies. So it's great to see kind of Lucy Gray just slapping banjos and knees and being sassy and talking about buttermilk and roses and talking about cream and Absolutely. just yeah. just every 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 stereotype or what well, not stereotype or every single um, cliche of a country folk. But it was kind of fun watching them not not hide her and just allowing her to be on screen. Because that's a lot of confidence for a really young actor to lead a movie like this. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I did get like a, a, a Wild Rose vibe from some of her songs. Yeah. Which is not, a, not a bad thing. It's an excellent film. Love that film so much. Buckley. Uh, uh, but she's also uh, uh, Rachel Ziegler has been a, she's been a guest on the Blank Check podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts, and she's just an excellent she's just a re really nice person in real life as well. It seems she was on for uh, the shows on Cabaret and uh, the Strice and A Star Is Born. Oh wow! Um, they're just so they're like two to three hour podcasts about one film, and she just has a hangs out and has a good time. And so I recommend she just seems like a really nice person. And then when you hear the stuff she has to go through online because she's playing Snow White, you're like, well, oh, why are you God. doing this? She seems like a really nice person. Uh, stop being dicks, everyone. It's just insane. It. Hey, hey, we're going to uh, – uh, listen, we're, Snow White's great, but we're just going to update it a little bit for a new generation because it was made in the 50s and probably took 10 years to make. So we're just going to update it a little bit. Yeah. I hate her. <laughs> you know, it's just, come on, y'all. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what? You should be angry at people. I'm really tired of – like, just be angry at people for real reasons. Like, there's so you know, there's so many more reasons to be angry at people. So many. Our world is insane right now. Just be mad at that. Yes. Don't be mad about someone's thoughts about Snow White. 
Yes. But I, I, <laughs> like, I, I read about the movie, like Dave Cobb did a lot of the, the music in this film. You know, I learned that Suzanne Collins was a, a country music DJ before she started huh. writing. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so I kind of dig that. Like the guy who worked on it, they said that they just – they both understood country and he it, – it's kind of interesting. So he said it took him – he worked on the songs for less than a month and he presented them. And he was like, yeah, it was great. He's like, I don't really like write, writing about myself. I don't like – writing about this but if i can write about a futuristic pan am it's a lot easier to write stuff for so i kind of dig that and he also said that like his grandfather was a bluegrass musician he grew up pentecostal he's like my grandmother was a preacher and so he's like and she sang like snow white and then that allowed him to kind of work with collins to make some pretty good songs so like i didn't expect this to be a musical no yeah i'm, I'm sad that he had a bluegrass background because i'll then it's not like she was a little bit country, he was a little bit rock and roll. They're just both <laughs> a bit country, which is unfortunate, but there we are. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like, I, I, I dug the music sorry. as well. Like, the Appalachia music, like the West Virginia, it's a very specific sound, and they understood it. So it's kind of, it's not just like my daddy slapping a banjo on a going down. Here. I'm singing Primus now, so I'm like Primus <laughs> from South Park. But it, yeah. it, I think they respected that. Everyone respected this. Like Francis Lawrence could direct this with his eyes closed, but he did a good job. We had gross puddle water, water drones, gratuitous showers, some crying, sweaty, sweaty palms. A, a tear-stained handkerchief that's very, very vital to the plot. Yeah. Uh, so. Great dock work. You know, yeah. You know what's interesting? I was thinking about docks, dock work. And sure. A lot of those do – I think about Friday 13th, that wildly gratuitous scene from the new Friday 13th. I think about Freddy vs. Jason. I think about Cabin in the Woods. I think about Evil Dead Rise. Docks are primarily used in horror movies, but the do Jaws. Jaws, yeah. Um, but the, the dock in the, this one was kind of a nice dock scene. The Last Shark has a pretty good dock scene. Where the dock <laughs> just gets ripped off and becomes a little floating raft and everyone dies. Oh, Meg 2. Sure, yep. Shark Boogaloo has a dock scene. And so it's, I don't know, I kind of like that this one has a just a nice one. Yeah. They found a nice German lake. Which, that that scene was shot well. I like the scenes out there in the country. This movie was not in a hurry. I kind of respected no. that too. Yeah, the whole film was is, is shot well. I would say. Yeah. Do you think they was, got on set and when they realized how good Blythe and Ziegler were, they're like, oh, okay, good. We can let's add some more scenes. Yeah, <laughs> we can we can make this works now. It was originally like a two hour movie, but they're like, no, nah, this is good. We're safe. I don't think they did that, but still. So what are your favorite water scenes in this? I mean, it's 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 the drones. I love the drones. It's just the, <laughs> them carrying the water and just, just smashing people over the head with them. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, and and it's, it's not really a water scene, but just the term swamp potato is like the, yeah. you know, the flower. It's 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 by a lake where they're talking about it. I just like that term swamp, swamp potato. Yes. Um, which is it turns out. I mean, that it turns out that's the name for a Katniss flower, which obviously Katniss Everdeen. And so why why was no one calling her Swamp Potato in those other films? Why were they not bullies going like, hey, Swamp Potato, get over here. Frickin' Swamp Potato. Like, that's perfect bullying territory. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Katniss equals Swamp Potato. I would have been what, calling her that. That's what all the other tributes should have been calling her. Like, hey, Swamp Potato! <laughs> Got your bow and arrow with you! Like, just... <laughs> and there's a rain scene as well. Uh, what I'm was not made out scene? of sugar. It's still raining. Well, I'm not made out of sugar. I'm not gonna melt. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> and it's not really a, a wet scene, but just the, the talk about the snakes a little bit. Cause they're like, there's definitely modified animals, so it's kind of deep to see. Just the, the the scene where the snakes are unleashed in the arena, and you just see the the surviving tributes getting swarmed with snakes, and just covered, and then dying, and it's some of the most innocent people that are left at that point. And you think this is a horrific scene. Oh, I was kind of expecting this, but also I wasn't expecting this. This is oof. Yeah, that. Anytime I see a snake thing, now I'm just gonna put my shirt in it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, why are you shirtless in in this pet store? You know. <laughs> why have you put a scrap of your shirt in all twenty of these tanks? What do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna keep them in my pocket. I'm gonna no, I'm gonna keep handkerchiefs on me. And just drop them in every snake cage. 
It's a good, a good idea, I think. Unless they get smart and they're like, attack the things you know. Well, <laughs> you've got 50 50 shots, so half the snakes are on your side. <laughs> half the snakes are defending you from the other half of the snakes. So, snake fight? <laughs> it's a snake fight. <laughs> we need to make that movie now. Well, that's, that's the next, the 76th Hungry Games. Because like there's there's this gap in the, in everyone's lives now of the this televised event it's gone, so they're just gonna replace it with a snake fight. Like take out it's, it's not for everyone's kids it's just snakes, and each di- each district gets to train a snake. Snake fight. Snake fight. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think this poison drinking is better than Princess Bride? Would you say it's a better poison drinking scene than Princess Bride? Uh I mean that's iconic. Princess Bride yeah. is, is 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 iconic, but it is also kind of silly. Like the how what a Sean the expression what a Sean makes at the end of that scene and just kind of falls over sideways uh, is pretty great. Um, so I, I would say this <laughs> is a more sincere, yeah. it's a more sincere poison drinking scene. Okay. Uh, the, what well, about I Prometheus? Kept, uh, well, what the engineer drinks it himself and then collapses in. Oh no, there's two, isn't it? The engineer yeah. drinks it and becomes Logan Marshall Green gets poisoned, and then uh, cheap Tom Hardy uh, becomes. Yeah. Um, that's. I was cheap trying to Tom. think of other other poison scenes, and that was one Hateful I couldn't eight. think of. I Wild think things. Up, yeah. I, I mean, I had a little list because Casino uh, the Royale. Court, the Court Jester is one that came up to me uh, as a film I haven't seen, but I, I, was, I was shown a scene of it when I was at school for some reason, and it's just that. The, the dialogue of the, the flagon with the dragon has the potion with the poison, or the pellet with the poison. The chalice with the palace has the brew that is true. I think it's it's something along those lines. I just have two people trying to remember that like rhyme and getting it all wrong. Uh, which is a fun scene. And I, I don't actually think the poison gets drunk at the end of that. <laughs> Last Crusade? Yeah, Last Crusade. Uh, no, it's, it's Temple of Doom. Temple no, Doom remember had... when they have to drink from the cup and one oh, of them... Oh, okay, yeah. But Temple of Doom has the poison at the start of it. With the, oh, um, yeah. In that scene. Uh, but yeah, they both Last have... Night in Soho, Half-Blood Prince. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just think this yeah. one's good. This is a very Battle Royale scene. So this was this scene was pretty much stolen from Battle Royale, where this this there's a real jerk girl, and this girl poisons her food, but one of her buddies takes her bowl, and then she dies, and then a gunfight yeah. breaks out between young girls, and they all yeah. die. They all die. Yeah. Oh, except for one, who did the poisoning, but then she kills herself. Yes. But it's it's very. I kind of like that there's house. a callback to battle royale because that's yeah that makes sense. It makes sense to do that because it's battle royale. Yeah. Which yeah, but, everyone else, like when Hunger Games came out, I was like it's just battle royale, but there are there's a lot of differences. It's not it's not exactly the same. Do you think uh, Dwayne Johnson would pee in those water bottles? What? <laughs> Why, Have you not heard about from? him? So on set when he's when they're they're saying that on set when he's busy he takes a vast glass water bottle and pees in it and makes like a pa get I rid of have it. Not heard that. I was allegedly my brain for like what where so this yeah, came when, from. He's like I don't want to go to the bathroom so he pees in a vast water bottle and people have to get rid of it. Oh, I hope he doesn't get it confused with his his sweet sweat. That would be unfortunate. <laughs> the next so he... <laughs> oh man, this is funny. <laughs> but yeah. did I have asparagus? Is that Evian or my? <laughs> That Evian smells like my pee. But yeah, so he, he do you think Dwayne Johnson would use those water bottles? I mean, I hope not. I feel like he's going down a lot of people's estimations. Like everyone used to think, oh, he's such a great guy. And the more I hear about him, the less I think that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dwayne Johnson. But, yeah. I mean, and, and, but you know what, though? They're like, Brian Reynolds and Dwayne Johnson had a huge fight on Red One. But apparently, Ryan Reynolds was like, hey, man. Can you stop being late? And then Dwayne Johnson's like, got it. And then he wasn't late anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a huge fight. So, okay, I, I, this is a this is a completely different rant for any other day. But da, I mean, Daniel Radcliffe was recently nominated for a Tony. Good for him. Love him. Uh, he was asked his opinion, as he's been asked many a time before, about J.K. Rowling and her mm. just being a stupid person. And he his response was, "I'm very sad that that's how she thinks." And then the interview went on to talk about something else. And that very sad had been posted online. Daniel Radcliffe, very sad that J.K. Rowling is this way. And you see so many people on, on Twitter or wherever be like, I don't care if Daniel Radcliffe is sad about J.K. Rowling. It's like, right, but he 
he didn't come out and, and pretend to go, everybody, settle down. I, Daniel Radcliffe, am very sad. He was asked a question, he gave an answer, and then he moved on. And then yeah. that's what, this is what I hate about the whole paparazzi thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, 85% anyway. of people only read headlines, so I mean, that's a exactly. great headline, right? So it's... Rad- Radcliffe sad about Rowling. Or, yeah. <sighs> People like I see people like oh, he owes her everything. He doesn't owe her anything at all. He's a good actor. He would have been fine. That, yes, he's got millions from Pal Potter, but it, it sucks though because you're like this franchise I was in is now becoming tarnished, and it sucks and it's sad. Yeah. He's sad. He sucks. You know, he says J.K. Like it's come on, y'all. Yes. Come anyway, <laughs> just like that it annoys me regularly is that kind of thing and how I'm, I like I still use Twitter. Therefore, am I am I perpetuating this cycle of intolerance? I don't yeah, know. But what else can you do? Right. Go take a buttermilk and rose petal bath. Sure. And just relax. That's a lot of buttermilk. I don't have that much buttermilk, so I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. What if they can't eat much? Why are they using all this buttermilk? Yeah. Maybe that's where they keep it. <laughs> they also bathe in it. Oh, I hope not. Hey, Jay, uh, before we get out of here, man, if I know you might have more notes, but before we get out of here, can we do a prequel draft real quick? Absolutely, yes, I'd love to. Okay, yeah. I'll let you go first. Okay. There's a lot of things that could be considered a prequel, so this is – feel free to Please. shout any of these down. Do your thing. Uh, I'm taking Wonka as my first one. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite Good film. Good job. From, my favorite film from last year. Uh, I love Wonka. So, yeah, Wonka. I'm going to do Final Destination 5. Oh, you swine. Because <laughs> – when they did that, I went, that's good. Like, yeah. that's that's a good one. Like, that's interesting. Sur- surprise prequel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that. I was going to take that. Um, okay, then I will take a film that you and I both love, Godzilla Minus One. Oh, yeah. I'm take, I'm going for re- recency bias with my picks. Here's, that's a great pick. I'll take <laughs> Prey, then. Yes. Excellent choice. Yeah. Um, let's see. Would you consider Casino Royale to be a prequel? Or re- cause it's more of a reboot. I don't mind if you don't take it. You can it. have it. Okay, because I don't know. The, the Daniel Craig one, not the... It's not Young the Bond. 60s one. Yeah, it's it's, like, it's it's the Bond origin story. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You can have okay. it. I'm going to take... <sighs> Minions. Because I've watched that movie so many times. It made a billion dollars. It's the highest grossing prequel ever, based on the budget. And I, I love Minions. I haven't seen it. <laughs> so you can take it. Um. Oh crap! I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Monsters University. Oh, that's so good. Which I feel like doesn't get uh, enough recognition as a. It's beautiful, fun. It's a great. It's. I, I love it so much. It's not as good as Monsters Inc. But what is? Yeah, what uh, is? And it's. It's just excellent. Uh, and you know, they, like Billy Crystal and John Goodman were like 15 years older than they were first time round, but managed to sound 30 years younger. So that's like, great work. Hire the best. Yeah. Rogue One. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love that movie. It's 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 the best Star Wars prequel easily yes. by a long way. <laughs> it's it's maybe one of the top three Star Wars films. So yeah, I agree. <laughs> um. um and so what's my last pick going to be? There's some good ones here. There's a lot. There's a lot. I, I mean, uh, there's some with pretty problematic directors. Uh, so I don't really want to take one of the X-Men prequels. Mm-hmm. Uh, despite I love Days of Future Past so much, but I'm not going to take it. Just I'm going to take I'm gonna take Kong Skull Island. Oh, oh, you made it easier for me. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. That's a good one. A lot of water action. I really like Kong Skull Island. Uh, Ooh, like right now, still on the board, I have Prometheus, Pearl... Temple of Doom, Caravan of Courage, Ewok Adventure, Insidious Chapter 3, Wonder Woman. But I think it's either Fast Five or Saw 10. So I wasn't going to count Fast Five. I feel like that's, that's, not, that's only a prequel because they screwed up the release order. <laughs> <laughs> like, that feels like a Saw mistaken 10. prequel. Because <laughs> Saw 10 is a good movie. Like It's a legit good movie. It's I, I think it's the highest rated of all the Saw movies. I remember watching going, this is good. So I'm going to take Saw 10. I, I still haven't seen it. And plus, I got hired to go, paid to go watch it so I can see if a limb was sawed off for a Rotten Tomatoes article. So. <laughs> That'd be great. It's like living the dream right there. <laughs> what more could you need? Yeah. So I've, what do you think would be in a Deep Blue Sea prequel? 
<laughs> if Deep Blue Sea 4 pulled a Final Destination, Final Destination 5 and turned out to be a prequel, are, are we doing like the origin of uh, the, the Russell Frankton origin story of him up the mountains? Yeah, he's, he's being a cannibal. Or are we doing the, I don't know what it would like, young Jim, young Jim Whitlock? <laughs> um, or how Carter became a treasure hunter slash shark yeah, wrangler. That that could work. It could be like, you know, we we don't really know how all these people came together. So like he and Scoggins could have had like adventure. Like Scoggins left Caltech and found Carter on a beach somewhere, and they just they became like diving bros. Uh, yes. Preacher was their cook. Everyone at Aquatica was just friends before they came to Aquatica. It was like they were not, they were not. We should have a friend style show where they're just friends before they go over there. <laughs> yeah. Just three I, seasons, twenty four episodes. I like it. Just like the the Aquatica sitcom, like the pre Aquatica. Yeah, yeah. Just and then one season they're on Aquatica, building it and like getting used to everything. Yeah. Oh man, that's great. I like it. I like it. We we, we, we could it. have we could have picked a Rennie Harden prequel. We could have taken Exodus at the beginning. Uh, in, our, in our drafts, but we didn't, mm-hmm. uh, and I know why we didn't, because uh, it's not great. I mean, they just brought him in to save that movie anyway. He did. Right? Yeah, he, he did what he could. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? You got here's a here's a crap sandwich for you, Ready? <laughs> make this make this just a, a lesser crap sandwich. Oh, and, and the guy who made it first around, he's gonna make another film. He's like they're, they're gonna make it this same film again next year. Schrader. I don't know, sorry, they, they made another Exorcist prequel, like, the following year, oh. with Stellan Skarsgård in it again, I think. I can't, I haven't seen that one. I might cut this out. Uh, but yeah, that was a real, he did, he did what he could, trying to save a hatchet job of a film. Anyway. We didn't pick that. Uh, so, <laughs> just trying to see if I have any more notes on the ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Hey, we did it, man. We did, we did. Uh, I, just, I just love Jason Schwartz. He, Schwartz had a hell of a 2023. Yeah, he did. With, like, with this, uh, Asteroid City, and Spider Verse. He's, he's, the fact that he's playing the host of the 10th Hunger Games is a weatherman slash magician. Oh, yeah. It's it just beautiful. <laughs> when he's doing his little uh, uh, sleight of hand tricks on camera. It's like, it that's just perfect. That's just beautiful. And, and he, I loved the moment when he's so happy with himself and he's like, Today, all colors lead to gray. They're all like, ah, I said a funny thing. Cause all... <laughs> he's, he's the best. I love him so much. These drones are just not the best. I gotta love that. Not... Smile, that's why we have teeth. He calls, a, he calls one of them uh, tuberculosis on legs. He's very funny in it. Yeah. He's Smile, great. that's why we have teeth. Yeah. And uh, when, when they're doing the pre-games interview and Lucy Gray... Does a song is oh it's it's so great we see someone's final performance it's like yeah. dude <laughs> like when you're when your people die just leave the, the stage like he's so blunt about it but he's funny he's, like, he's rescheduling his his dinner plans his dinner because they're running late I'm not gonna make it because I'm the host of the uh, 10th uh, annual hunger hunger yeah. games so we need a table for two and a high chair no, yeah, yeah. It's just a... is that his son is that the tooch in that uh, I mean yeah it must be yeah. That's a little uh, Caesar. Mm. Uh, See, so yeah, that's all I got for Shadow of Songbirds and Snakes. This uh, is great. I, I'm not sure what franchise we're going to do next. Um, we'll probably announce that eventually. I got that. We'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But did you have anything else about this this film? It's just, it's good. I I it's good performances. I mean, it, I think it slows down. You have to recalibrate. And I'm glad they didn't split into two movies, but I think all together it's a su- successful prequel with some good water drones. I agree. I agree. I didn't watch it in ideal situation. So we started watching it too late on a Sunday. And so we finished it like just after the the, the game. So I kind of did it as a two-parter. And then that second night we were out in the evening and we didn't get back to like 10 p.m. And we'd rented it. Like, oh, the rental expires in like six hours. <laughs> so it's like, we've got we to watch this now. It's a school night. <laughs> And so we just had to pl- sit, plod through it, but it, it kept us entertained. Like we kept us kept us awake. So uh, yeah, it's... we uh we watched it on a tablet in Savannah. I got a screener for it last December, and so we watched it on a tablet while our daughter was sleeping in a, a hotel room. Our daughter was in one room. We were on a tablet with her, uh, headphones split, laying on the bed <laughs> watching it. Cause, nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it wasn't ideal. I didn't get to see it on a big screen or anything, but I still enjoyed it. Yeah, there we go. It works in that kind of scenario. Great. Uh, anything to plug, Mark? Yeah, uh, so I worked on a thing with Shea Serrano. It's a yes. Ryan Gosling no- uh, novel. Uh, it's 70 pages of just Ryan Gosling stuff about his movie, so I helped out with some research. Didn't write it, but I helped out with research, which is cool. I have a post-apocalyptic video out for fandom that should be out now and by the numbers and i have a rom-com one coming up for them so i'm very excited and then i should nice. have a minions video coming out soon so for film theory that's awesome i i, I have nothing and uh, that's fine uh you can follow this podcast everywhere on at or on all social media at deep blue sea pod uh, everything mark does is at movies films and flicks.com everything i do is at life versus film.com uh, next week, I don't know what we're doing next week because we're recording this a little far in advance, but the week after next is the Rakeen or the Requin. We don't know how you pronounce it, but it's a it's shark in French. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about in a couple of weeks' time. And that's a fun... <laughs> we both, we've both seen it. We're recording it soon. <laughs> it's a fun film that goes places. Yes. It just takes a little while to do so. Uh, but come back in a couple of weeks. What, what, there'll be a show next week. I just don't know what it is yet. Calm down. Uh, maybe I would have plugged it on last week's I show. Need to know, Jay, I need to know, Jay. I need to know. I'd love to know. If I knew, I would tell you, Mark, but I don't know. Maybe Five I Days of War? Uh, no, that, that came out, Mark, three weeks ago. Don't you remember? <laughs> uh, I, 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 might, I might have plugged next week's show on last week's show. <laughs> or the one before that, because we're recording this completely out of sync. But that's fine. That's fine. Next week, we'll be talking about some kind of shark film or some kind of... Uh, Rennie Harden film or some kind of aquatic film of some nature. Who knows? We'll find out next week. But as for today, as for The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I have been Jake Lewitt. And I'm Mark Hoffmeyer. Wait! Just caught a coin. Nice. Uh, we'll deep blue. See you next week. Bye!